You're listening to the sounds of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi radio. No, literally, this is the sound of Wi-Fi. And Yusi's the one playing this. Hey guys, so um, we thought that it might be a cool idea to, uh, instead of just looking at spectrum analysis, given that we're on a podcast, convert our tools into turning Wi-Fi spectrum analysis into sound. And that's what you're hearing here. And, uh, you know, if you want to know more, listen on in. Yeah, we'll talk more about how UC was able to do this with a sidekick and Echo House Site Survey. Exactly, not me, our developers. developers. I, I just take the credit. Yeah. And joining us, a couple of actual Echo House Sidekick customers, uh, Sam, Sam Clements, Clements and George, George Stefanik. Stefanik. So, so uh, yeah, the, the main topic here today really is Sidekick, right? Mm -hmm. our, our new hardware device. And this is just a small niche. Yeah, this is just a cool, fun feature. We hope you guys like this episode. Welcome to the Clear to Send podcast, a podcast about wireless engineering, where we educate you on Wi-Fi technology, talk about design tips, troubleshooting, interviews, and the tools. Here are your hosts, Roel and Francois. We're here with a brand new episode with UC and two other guests. We got Sam Clements and George Stefanik. We're in a special location this time, but uh, last time you see you and I are, were together, and UC's here with me in person. Hey, bro. Hello. Hello. We were actually just walking outside. I think uh, near Levi Stadium. That's that was the uh, the first time we did. Oh, this first was, time, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, like episode three or yeah. six or something like that. But sixty nine, episode sixty nine. Oh wow, uh, you, you've got that. I don't even know the number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We were uh, up in the lounge of the Santa Clara. Marriott. Oh, that's right. We were in the Marriott, you know, up on the top floor, overlooking the traffic. Exactly. <laughs> hey, you, uh, it is Silicon Valley after all. And now we're where the cool kids uh, stay <laughs> for work, right? At the Hana House uh, remote oh, working yeah. facility. If you guys saw the people sitting here, you know, this is the epicenter of... Um, what's the word for it? This is like the downtownest point of Silicon Valley, yeah. literally. We're right on University. Yeah. Everyone here is a coder of yeah. some sort. And, and a so you mean the hub is what you're trying to say. <laughs> We're in the, uh -huh. in the yes. switch. In the switch. <laughs> thank, thank, thanks for a while. We, we that. switched into a hub. <laughs> well, since we're going to talk about some Wi-Fi, I guess we can talk about hubs. <laughs> um, but welcome, Sam and George. Uh, welcome to the show. Why don't you guys introduce yourselves for those who don't know you, if those people don't know you. Uh, let's start with George. Yes, uh, I'm George Stefanik. Uh, I'm a lead architect for a large healthcare system here in Texas. Uh, I'm also a principal consultant at uh, Active Expert, and uh, very passionate about Wi-Fi. Love uh, helping the community. The community has helped me so much over the years, um, and I have my blog at myeight211.com. Awesome, Sam. Excellent. My name is Sam Clements. I'm a mobility practice manager at a uh, large VAR here in the states, and um, I, I my passion for Wi-Fi is seconded only by George. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a pleasure to have you guys join join us here remotely. And um, you see, why are we here today? Yeah, it's kind of hard to go after you know two of the leading guys with actual uh, you know knowledge and field experience on the ma subject matter. But um, so for those of you out there, uh, thanks for tuning in. My name is Yussi. I do janitorial duties at a company called Ekahau. Um, Still jan janitorial? It's been the same. For, yeah, I, yeah, I used to be junior janitor. <laughs> now now I'm the semi-junior janitor. Oh. Um, so, so, you know, career career development for you. <laughs> uh, yeah, but we do, um, we make Wi-Fi design tools. So we are a vendor of a kind, but we don't do, uh, we don't do Wi-Fi gear. And we don't do Wi-Fi uh, consultancy design deployment, that's those kind of things. But we try to equip guys like Sam and George uh, with the tools to design, you know, may make it a bit maybe smoother and easier for those guys to design and deploy and troubleshoot, you know, better Wi-Fi networks. Yeah. And, th and there's a reason why we have these two on, because we, we do want to specifically talk about the sidekick. Is that correct? Yeah, why not? I, I I have no problem with that. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Uh, uh, Sam, George, you okay with the topic in in question? 
Uh, no, I'm out of here. <laughs> oh wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. guess I guess I can stick around. All right, <laughs> yeah, no worries. <sighs> well, why don't we step into it? What I mean, you have it here, right in front of in front of me. I'm actually still waiting for mine. Uh, it's in the way, on the way. <laughs> but uh, the sidekick itself, I, I guess maybe if we step back and talk about how we've been doing it before, prior to the sidekick, and we would plug in. Um, a USB hub, use these USB adapters, uh, and somehow attach them to our laptops or to your bag, to something, right? Mm -hmm. and, and then all of a sudden you guys announce the sidekick. Like why, why bring out the sidekick? So that's exactly right. And that's what happens. So the Wi-Fi uh, site survey measurement troubleshooting industry has been using dongles successfully for for the last 15 or 17 years for getting, you know, measurements, whether it's Wi-Fi radio measurements or uh, spectrum analysis, stuff like that. And that's that's kind of uh, where we were scratching our heads as well, because at the same time, our customers wanted, you know, better quality spectrum analysis, faster, more accurate. They wanted better standardization between the devices. They wanted better measurement accuracy from the Wi-Fi radios. But at the same time, they wanted things like, you know, I, I need my laptop battery to last longer mm. uh, so, so there were a lot of these kind of uh, requirements and also uh, i don't want to install wi-fi adapter drivers uh these dongles you know get tangled and, and it's complicated setup and if i give this to the next guy who might be a networking expert but not a wi-fi expert it's hard for him to set all this up and mm. connect everything and get, make sure it works and make sure the drivers are installed so we wanted something that's you know accurate standardized out of the box and make your sure battery run longer. And then we figured, okay, a dongle is not going to cut it. We need to build like a fully featured in, in a way, like a mini computer device. Uh, well, it's, it, Sidekick is not a computer, but we need to build a device that houses battery so, so it doesn't drain any of the laptop battery like the dongles do. We, we knew that we need like high end components. So, so for that reason too, already the dongles were you, you know, uh, the USB slots in the laptops were running out of battery, even with the dongles and where, yeah. you know, this is a beefier device. So we needed, needed that. So it became a standalone device that you, in a way, wear. Uh, so just like you would put in, put on your, let's say, messenger bag for, for your laptop, mm -hmm. uh, you wear the sidekick. Obviously, sidekick is much smaller, but still the idea is the same that, uh, you know, when you wear it, it becomes almost like invisible, the way it disappears, mm -hmm. and then you connect it to your laptop, and there's nothing else you need in terms of dongles and, and things like that. And then sidekick essentially has no display, has one button, has two lights or three, and it just feeds. The sole purpose of Sidekick is feed the Wi-Fi measurements, both spectrum analysis and uh, from the Wi-Fi radios to the tablet or laptop, which is then visualizing the data, collecting the data. Okay. Well, I like the idea of getting rid of the dongles. Sam, do you share that same sentiment? <laughs> Yeah, I, for sure. I mean, I think, you know, when I take a look at it um, from, you know, at least from a VAR perspective, uh, especially from a large VAR perspective, you know, one of the challenges we have is is when you're doing Wi-Fi design day in and day out and you've got, you know, 100 engineers going out and doing site surveys, um, you know, there's there's risk involved in that from a uh, material damage perspective. I think that um, there's it, not just counting the ease of use and, the, and, you know, plugging up the machine and all that fun stuff. Um, but when you have, you know, three Three or four, you know, adapters sticking up off your a laptop lid, or you know, hanging off the side of your machine, or whatever. And you know, your your job is to walk around and take measurements all day long. Um, you know, you you can accidentally bump into things. People can bump into you. You can, you know, any number of things can occur. Um, the USB ports can be broken off in in transport. There's a there's a variety of issues that go along with that. Just from a reliability perspective, I think that, um, you know, transitioning away from those multiple adapters, if you can do it gracefully and cleanly, um, is a, is a brilliant idea. I think that, you know, that, that concept of, you know, the Wolverine assembly sitting up off of the back of your laptop lid is, um, while it's cute, um, I, 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 I there just had to have been a better way, um, and, and a less, uh, intrusive way, I suppose, would probably be the, the the better way to put it. And you know, certainly when we look at um, our internal 
optional adoption of Sidekick. Um, yeah, it, you know, getting rid of those things hanging off of your machines, getting rid of you know obstacles that you can bump up against and break hardware and do all that fun stuff with. Uh, the, it's a it's a very very compelling reason just from a mechanics perspective. That's the first time I've heard the USB adapters referred to as a Wolverine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's a lot of people call them a lot of different things, but it, it certainly is. A, it certainly brings to mind, uh, um, you know, the challenges of having a bunch of stuff sticking up off the back of your machine. No, I agree, and and I know George, you have a very specific process on how you do your surveys. And how did you feel moving from USB adapters to using the Sidekick? Because it does come with a shoulder strap. So now it's positioned, you know, instead of on your laptop screen, it's over to your side. You can have it on the back, uh, on behind you. You can position it different ways. How do you think this would, for me, would affect the RF um, metrics that you're gathering? Yeah, right. And, and first, to, to start off, I echo everything that Sam said. You know, uh, when we started off, you know, many years ago, we started off with the uh, PCMCA cards, if you might remember. And then, you know, we migrated to the USB standard. And now, uh, in my mind, the Sidekick is the next standard, right? Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I have to say, I was a little, little uh, cautious when I first seen the Sidekick at Cisco Live. Uh, excited in a lot of ways because, uh, again, it cleans up the cables um, and having the opportunity to use it now. Um, at an NFL stadium, at multiple hospitals, and on an outdoor deployment, I could tell you it's it's clean, it's easy, and it just works, right? And there's less cables. Um, I, I have a lot of confidence in, in the sidekick myself. Um, before we actually put it into the field, we did a number of RSSI tests just to see where does the sidekick sit in comparison to um, our normal NICs that we would use for survey. And, you know, I was cautious because I wasn't sure, you know, if it's positioned on the side, how does it read the RF? If it's positioned on my back, et cetera, and how we do our surveys, you know, uh, we're doing multiple paths, um, trying to collect a, uh, you know, a lot of RF data. So this way we could uh, properly analyze our designs. And what we found, interestingly enough, is that uh, regardless if it was on my side, if I'm facing the access point or if I'm not, you really didn't see any type of uh, RF degradation, if you will. It was pretty consistent. Um, also, the sidekick hears exceptionally well, and I like that. You know, it's uh, it, it hears as well as access points, as well as the, uh, uh, the AirCheck G2. Um, so I, I'd rather have a device that has that high level of receive sensitivity. So this way I could better analyze all the data. And then uh, I appreciate what uh, you see the team have done by adding some uh, uh, advanced pro features with uh, dialing back the uh, the signal for uh, RF propagation. And thank you, UC, for that. Um, it's not terribly heavy. Uh, it's light. Um, it did take a little bit getting used to. Uh, by giving, the, and we have three now, by the way, uh, and thank you, UC, for expediting those to us uh, for that large NFL project. But uh, we, uh, we, we had a, uh, an interesting situation. We had uh, six folks doing some surveys for us. Uh, and uh, we had three sidekicks. And after the first day, engineers that never used the sidekick were fighting over it to get it the next day for their <laughs> assessments. So um, it's just easy. You know, no, no more driver issues, uh, less cables to fool around with. Um, we're, we're pretty excited about it. Can, can you elaborate more on those advanced features that you get with the sidekick? Because I don't think I'm aware of any advanced features on the USB adapters, which I still use. <laughs> UC, did you want to touch base on that or should I? Either way, um, you know, you go ahead. Uh, I'm sure the audience has heard my voice you know, many enough times. So <laughs> go ahead, George, if you don't mind. Sure. The receive sensitivity on the sidekick is very, very good. And uh, as you're doing your data collection, um, it could be uh, some misleading information because the sidekick is going to hear the RF exceptionally well. Um, so by having the ability, by hitting the uh, control tab and then the legend, for example, on the signal strength, you can then build in different profiles. Uh, for example, like a generic uh, a laptop um, or make a custom one. Uh, so if you do your own testing and you're designed to a specific device, and if you know your decibel difference, you can uh, adjust that uh, within 
uh, ECA house site survey. So it was a really nice feature for us. Um, well, and if I can chime in on that, if you don't mind, I know that, um, you know, George, you, you spoke about, um, you know, the psychic having some great receive sensitivity. I, I think we struggled with um, the variance um, of the uh, USB adapters that we had out in the field. You could take 10 USB adapters and line them up and they could be, you know, 10, 12 dB different between the the top adapter and the bottom adapter. And so when you're when you're when you're talking George about taking you know the sidekick and saying okay I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of deafen you up to to look more like a laptop or more like an iPhone or more like a fill in the blank. When we started with the Proxim adapters, we had a huge variance at the beginning for sort of from a baseline perspective. And then we had a huge variance on the other side as we were trying to pick a different type of client to to sort of make the RF look like that. With the sidekick, it took all of the variance on the adapter, or at least on the receive sensitivity side of the house, and basically flattened it out. It was a huge benefit to us to say, you know what, um, we now no longer have to go and try to understand the variance between all of the USB adapters that we have. And hey, Bob's got one that's 3 dB cooler, and George has got one, or Steve, or whomever. Or sorry, George, um, that's got one that's you know a 6 dB hotter, and and there's all this variance in the field. Um, we're seeing um, you know very 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 tight. Um, uh, measurements between the psychic units themselves, which allows us to take almost the entire first half of that conversation about calibration and compensation, uh, more compensation than calibration, and 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 take it and baseline it very, very, very predictably. And, and that's huge. And I think that's one of the things that's probably very, very commonly overlooked when you talk about psychic. Yeah, it's a great piece of hardware and all that. But um, you know, taking all that variance away up front so that when you measure with two or three or four or 10 or 100 sidekicks, you know, th those measurements that are coming in are going to be very, very, very similar to each other. So there, there isn't much of a difference between different sidekicks is what you're saying. Whereas on the USB adapters, it's just, it just varies very widely. Yeah, for sure. Wow. That's great to hear. I mean, that is a problem even when you don't know you even have a bad USB adapter, right? Because you could be gathering data with two or three adapters. And I know when I was, when I was doing surveys with three adapters, mine were just very loose on, on my device, right? On my laptop. And I would just nick it real quick, you know, a small nick on a door. And then I have to sit there for <laughs> the nick on a nick, the nick on a nick. Uh, <laughs> and, and they have to fix it right then on the spot, right? And you waste time doing that kind of thing. Whereas the, the sidekick, I can just wear it on the side and not have to worry about having it get disconnected. But you do have that one cable, right, from the sidekick, the USB cable that goes to the sidekick to the laptop. Correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, the side, we could have made sidekick all wireless as well and stream the measurements wirelessly to the laptop. But what would we have been had, you know, forced to use as a technology? Bluetooth. And yeah. what does it do to your spectrum analyzer? Mm -hmm. It's, yeah. It kills it. And actually, speaking of that, uh, one of the benefits of the sidekick too is that uh, we were seeing uh, situations where if you were doing active testing simultaneously, so there's different ways of Wi-Fi testing and sidekick does uh, passive and spectrum analysis, those two tests, passive uh, testing and spectrum analysis. And in that scenario, often your laptop is doing active end-to-end -end connectivity testing. And because Sidekick, for example, if it's worn in your, you know, bag or, or like uh, the default is as a messenger bag, it's further away, pos it's positioned further away from the laptop. Yeah. So the active testing, although we send minimal amounts of data with the default active testing, yeah. it hurts uh, kind, yeah. kind of you the don't spectrum see measurements. That on your measurements. A exactly. Because yeah. usually the USB adapters are mounted near the top of your laptop monitor, which could possibly be where also your wireless card is for your laptop. Precisely. It's, it's, it is in there. So now, can, can we talk about the spectrum analysis in the, in the, in the unit itself and how, well, how big of a difference that is between using the USB adapters? Cause I'd be interested in hearing more about that, even from the perspective of Sam and George. Exactly. And, and, uh, Sam, and, and George, maybe you can talk this through, especially I know, uh, 
we've had a long it's it's no secret we've had like four year relationship with sam's company and sam has lo- those you know more than 100 engineers uh surveying for him and so, so i tend to when sam calls i tend to pick up and uh <laughs> and uh yeah and, and those calls more more and more frequently started concerning spectrum analysis sam you want to uh, go on from here well sure um i i think that um, you know, it's no secret that we, that the organization I work for is a, is a large Cisco VAR. You know, we do a, a variety of infrastructure vendors, but we certainly do a large amount of work, um, using Cisco products. And, you know, for many, many years, the, the de facto spectrum analysis, um, capabilities have come from, you know, again, George said, hey, we used to use PCMC cards way back in, way back when, or card bus cards and the Cognio acquisition from Cisco, um, brought, you know, really that PC based spectrum analysis, uh, that, that very high resolution PC based spectrum analysis, um, to the portfolio. And so we've been leveraging that for, for a really, really long time. Um, just because it's been, it's, it's just a million times cleaner than what we could get out of, you know, most anything else. And that's not to say that the, the older adapters were terrible, but it was, it's one of those, you know, if you can wear, you know, foggy glasses or if you can wear clean glasses, you're, you're going to prefer clean glasses. Mm -hmm. Um, especially if you, are relying on the fidelity and integrity of that data. Um, and so when, you know, I think when UC first brought up the idea of Sidekick to me way back when, um, you know, one of my first concerns was, hey, that's uh, great that you're talking about spectrum analysis, but, you know, you've got to get something that is going to be in the class or better of what we've been using um, in the in the PC-based a world of spectrum analysis, um, meaning the Cognio class products. And we've been using them with, um, the SE connect mode on the APs and all that fun stuff. And, and, uh, and I've got to say he, he delivered the team delivered. Um, when you compare the spectrum analysis in sidekick to what we get out of the clean air APs, it, it's on par, if not better. Um, wow. certainly from a performance perspective, it's better. Now we're, we're still waiting on, you know, uh, fleshing out a couple of, a couple of things here and there as far as device identification is concerned. But, um, gosh, the, the if you're a squiggly lines kind of guy, mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't get any prettier than, than, uh, than the sidekick. Does the sidekick give you any device, uh, identification? Um, all I can say is the product is firmware upgradable and, and uh, currently it does not. So actually, uh, this is just for you listeners. I don't know when this is going to air, but next year is Wireless Lamp Pros and uh, I'm kind of trying to demo our, our uh, prototype of the device next classification. Next year or this month? Uh, so, sorry, next week. Next. next week. Did I say next year? Yes. Oh, yeah. too little coffee, man. <laughs> Where's that Americano? Uh, we are in a coffee shop. Yeah. Hurry up with the damn croissants. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anyway yeah yeah so so it's it's no secret it's in the making okay. uh, so so and i and i just wanted to add that like any of the field measurement features will be coming out uh in the future for our upcoming like current software products and future software products are based on uh using the sidekick oh okay so i there's potential to remove a bunch of other adapters in my bag because i us Wi-Fi guys seem to carry a lot of different things. To I hate do that. I, all, I hate that know. people have to do that. <laughs> to ca- to have at least one device that does it very well, you know. I I just I just don't want you guys to start pursuing other features and have have that take away from you know the quality kind of diminish. You know what happens when companies start focusing on many different things. Is- We've never had any quality problems <laughs> on any of our products, so I have absolutely no idea. But I'm, let me let me Google that. <laughs> but I would like to see some more f- uh, features put into it that that allows us to get rid of some some of the other tools that we're using because my bag's getting heavy. I'll tell you that carrying all the different tools. That, you know, if I need to do spectrum analysis, let me bust out this tool. Like, okay, maybe the resolution wasn't as wasn't as good there. Let me take out a Cisco AP and use SE Connect there. It, it, and then there's just there's a lot of things that we have to pull out of our bags. And wouldn't you guys agree, Sam and George, that we carry a ton of stuff just to do our job? Oh yeah, for sure. And you know, at least from, from my perspective, it's, it's about, you know, Psychic is a hardware platform that, that we look to see, you know, a lot of development happening on. Um, I, I think we're, we're expecting Psychic to take over, you know, the, the majority 
priority role of all of those adapters in our uh, in our bags at some point in the future. Yeah, and I would also add not only the physical hardware, but if you look at the cost, the Sidekick uh, in some cases may be cheaper than just a, a simple spectrum analyzer mm-hmm. um, that's you know being sold right now. So you know if you look at it from a cost perspective, you save on the NICs, you save on the uh, uh, spectrum analyzer. Everything's wrapped into one box, and it's it's very cost uh, uh, competitive. And you don't risk breaking them when you bump into something. Right. You don't nick the nick, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, should we? Uh, this this is something that that's I don't think uh, has has been done before. But uh, it's hard to kind of convey uh, the differences in spectrum analysis over sound. So, Psychic is one of those products, and I was just at a. Uh, very large uh, Wi-Fi vendor yesterday, and I remember two quotes after showing their SE directors, uh, you know, what Sidekick can do. The two quotes I remember is, uh, this got my juices flowing, was, was one. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the next one was, uh, we, we were talking about like showcasing it to all of their SEs, like hundreds of them, and, and the answer was, no, we can't because everybody will want it and we don't have the budget for it. Although they found it like a very valuable tool. They, are you sure they, you guys are talking about Wi-Fi there? <laughs> <laughs> Let's not enter that discussion. I'm borderline fired every day as, as it is. <laughs> All right, so, so what do you have planned here? You're gonna... So a so, um, couple of weeks ago, I, I was, uh, you know, I remembered that, shoot, we have this podcast with Rowell. Thanks by the way, so much for the opportunity. And uh, let me brown know some more awesome <laughs> job. Like you know, from from like zero, you've made this the industry leading Wi-Fi podcast in just, you know, a couple of years. So very, very well done. And I love the way you're oh, like you. helping the community without, you know, uh, monetizing it too much. We, we, you know, there's no like monetary motives behind this. No, we just no. love Wi-Fi and, and that really shows. Yeah. So, so anyway, uh, I was thinking like, so how do we convey the spectrum analysis uh, capabilities of Sidekick to someone who's there listening and hasn't <laughs> yeah. seen it. Of course, you can go to our website and, and I would recommend looking at the video, stuff like that. And then uh, I had an idea, uh, which I, you know, then shared with uh, Mikhail, my, my good friend and uh, and one of the ESS key developers, the guy who designed RTFM, uh, mm-hmm. the, the real-time frequency monitor functionality, mm-hmm. and the guy who designed the template-based reporting. You, you know, he's, he's, a, he's a genius. So I told him, could, could I please, uh, you know, borrow like a few hours of your time? I want to make spectrum analysis back to sound again. Uh-huh. You know, the software Winamp uh, from, oh, yeah. from back in yeah. the day, which had this uh, equalizer functionality. And a lot of the car radios have that. So it's kind of like a spectrum yeah. analyzer. And so you saw the waveform. Exactly. Across, Music yeah. is playing. It, it is a spectrum analyzer, but just for a different frequency from mm-hmm. zero to like 22 kilohertz or whatever the, the range of like audible sound is. Uh, Sam, can you do the VNAMP intro at this point? <laughs> uh, absolutely. Um, I, I think it's something like this. Uh, Winamp, it really kicks the llama's ass. <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> or whips the llama's ass, I guess. I don't remember which one. Whipping or kicking, I guess it's it's about the same, right? It's, yeah, it's all the same. Uh, anyway, uh, so, so thinking of that, why don't we return Spectrum Analyzer and like Wi-Fi spectrum analysis back to sound for the podcast listener. So this is a feature that's built into oh. ESS. I'm I'm running like a just it's development built build of ESS okay. where we can see the spectrum analysis visually. But uh, let's hope that uh, we we also get some sound. All right, we're so, gonna play. We're gonna play the sounds of RF. I think this could be something you can say on Alexa. Like Alexa, play me the sounds of RF. Play my Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> so let, let's let's see. So here's a traditional uh like spectrum pre sidekick spectrum analyzer. Or is it? Hold on. There it is. There we go. And now we're introducing a video camera. So you get some different tones, a few different tones. And you get a resolution of like, uh, you know, once a second. And this is five gigahertz. We introduce a wireless video camera on a, again, on a traditional pre sidekick spectrum analyzer. So it's introduced, but it's not quite catching it because it's narrow band, not with every sweep. Gotcha. But at times it is. And we'll, here we go. Yeah. You, you get the point, right? So yes. that's what a traditional spectrum analyzer sounds yeah, and that, like. Yeah. And it's not playing it. 
constantly because it has to sweep the channel. Right? Exactly. So, exactly. so if you were just uh, just scanning one channel, you could probably pick it up more often. Yeah, and and for narrow band, it's it misses it often, and mm-hmm. for Bluetooth, it misses it often because because the sweep time is so so low. So now uh, let's introduce Sidekick. So this is uh, idle idle Wi-Fi first. Uh, just ambient noise. It's just a- a- ambient noise, and every now and then you can hear it. But here we go. Now let's start uploading at some point a little bit of uh, of Wi-Fi. Here we go. <laughs> you can hear the frequencies uh, of updates is like twenty times per second compared to one roughly before. Yeah. Here's Bluetooth. Frequency hopping, right? So yeah. you can hear different frequencies. It's like we're playing a concert here. <laughs> exactly. And, and that's then, almost exactly how I expected Bluetooth to sound. <laughs> <laughs> Just as annoying, right? <laughs> and, and then let's bring exactly. in the video camera. Uh, this we heard on, on the different guy or the traditional guy. But now it's on the side. And it, the video camera switches uh, frequencies. Wow. <laughs> So it's just, you know, so much faster and also so much more granular. And here's, so here's the motion detector to top it off that we previously caught every now and then. Now we catch it all uh, the time. It sounds just, that's just what a motion detector should do. Exactly. And that's, it then we zoom, zoom, ah, zoom in and zoom in. But you, you get the point. So this is uh, kind of the idea that we wanted more clarity. And we wanted more speed. And this results in, well, you could say, okay, besides the quickly lines, like Sam said, what is the end user benefit? It's like you can walk as quickly as you can walk literally okay. around the so side. So I don't have to walk at a snail's pace anymore. I can get these surveys done much faster. Exactly. You have those two built-in Wi-Fi radios capturing the signals, but then you have a super fast 2.4 and 5 gigahertz simultaneously both spectrum analyzer sweeping 20 times a second. So previously people were like stopping for 30 seconds or one minute in one position to make sure that they capture enough spectrum data because mm-hmm. the update rate could be like once a second, mm-hmm. but now it's 20 times a second. So you build the picture in one second okay easily. so and then you, you get a better resolution as well because you we ha- actually haven't talked about the hardware that's underneath that shell is that even something we can talk about absolutely absolutely so it has two uh, wi-fi radios enterprise grade three by three ac uh, which are also capable of passively surveying ax which is important mm-hmm. to highlight here for for you know okay. future future proofing purposes so two of those the, the same stuff you have in the you know in the better aps and then uh it has our own custom built spectrum analysis hardware oh, we tried okay. to buy it uh uh-huh. from different sources but there just wasn't anything out there that met our requirements which were it needs to be 20 times faster and 20 times more accurate than than you know what people are using today or yeah. or something crazy like that but uh and and you know, uh, the actually the exact spec was. I don't want to hear Sam calling me and whining <laughs> on a Sunday anymore. That's, Thanks, that's Sam. The exact spec. We appreciate it. <laughs> hey, I, I'll take credit for that. I suppose. Sure. Why not? <laughs> and and we wanted you know eight hour battery life, so it has a lot of battery in it. Oh, and, that's uh, great. Because and, yeah, I was I was stuck trying to do my surveys within you know three to four hours because of battery, or just have another laptop ready to go. Exactly. You know, if you have to do longer. Well, it's interesting. The, you know, the battery thing is interesting because it's um, with the with the all day, you know, eight hour battery life. Um, it, we we still find out that we're running now up against the battery life of the machines, even though we're still getting improved battery life mm. off of the off of our hosts. Yeah, they're lasting you know, 20, 30% longer, but we're still not able to get a full day out of it. Uh, now the problem is laptop battery. Yeah. And, and what kind and, of laptops are you guys using for your surveys with the sidekick? I could tell you, but then I have to kill you. <laughs> no, um, we, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're a, we're a pretty typical standard, uh, corporate issue, uh, organization, everything from, uh, from Lenovo machines up to, uh, Apple machines. Yeah. And, uh, we're using the surface pros. Uh, we've standardized on that. Oh, that's great. Cause I, the one thing I didn't like about the Surface Pros was having to use the, U, the USB adapter. Cause I found right, that that stuck one. out so, so far off the side that I'd hit it on, on, in the way in, into an office. <laughs> Well, when we when, when we evaluated the Surface tablets, we found there wasn't enough USB 
bus power to power the hub, mm. uh, two adapters, spectrum analyzer. You know, we found out that we would start losing connectivity to one of the adapters or the other. And we just had this, this, this very, very, um, uh, different results throughout the day. Um, and as it turns out, it was a star of USB bus. I, I had the same experience and, uh, the, also, the surfaces are fairly easy to break at the ports, at least the earlier ones, where the modern ones are are likely better. But the USB power problem in some of the surfaces, and I don't know, George, if you're using this, but if you go to Windows Registry, there is a registry hack that you can use to give the USB port more power than, <laughs> if, you, you know, uh, it just helps if you have a Surface Pro and get these, you know, adapter connected, disconnected mm-hmm. things with your uh, hub, hub and... Uh, adapter combinations no, not that we need that with sidekick yeah yeah, yeah right. we don't we don't Sandy need that with the sidekick. wolverine approach right he's got 50 nicks <laughs> you're right <laughs> <laughs> off thing, so yeah so with the sidekick it just it doesn't get power through the usb it's because you've got the battery built in so that's a huge plus yeah yeah it's it's one one less of a problem yeah so you, talking oh. about the battery that was one of the, the things that i had issues with uh, or concerns with initially, because from a laptop perspective or a Surface perspective, uh, we actually carry a uh, little battery pack um, that plugs into the laptop. So we were able to easily get 8, 10, 12 hours out of a laptop. Mm. And uh, our first project doing the Sidekick, we were a little skeptical as to how much battery life we would uh, get out of it. And interestingly enough, we would plug it in during our break times and over lunch, and you were easily getting over nine, nine and a half hours. Um, on the sidekick. So we, we were pretty impressed with it. Yeah. And one less thing to carry with a bunch of cables, right? Yeah. But longer than OSHA tells you, you should be working anyway, right? <laughs> true that. True that. George doesn't follow OSHA. <laughs> it, it's what it weeks, Sam. <laughs> and our days. <laughs> yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> uh, who needs, who needs to do documentation, right? <laughs> Well, that, we that how does it for you, right? <laughs> yeah, templates. <laughs> click off the <and> button. <laughs> yeah, one-click templates, I thought. <laughs> All right, well, what else have we not talked about with the Psychic, or should we move on to a different topic? I mean, did we cover it all? So, so we covered, uh, you know... The- can I customize the shell on that thing? <laughs> <laughs> you, you certainly can, but there might be some warranty uh, warranty <laughs> things here and there that you might want to consider. But, um, well, I mean, I, I guess the last thing is, like, how, how do you get more information? So on our website, you can find some, you know, videos, introductory videos. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's several videos of, of uh, Psychic in Action. Uh, if you Google like a house sidekick on YouTube, I think Keith and uh, Sam and Blake did a lot of stuff for, mm-hmm. you know, their combined WLAN pros, no strings attached. Uh, yeah, stuff. I saw that one. That was great. That was probably one of the first things I saw once the, um, once the sidekick came out. So there's a lot of podcasts, videos, blogs about the device. So whether it's the right tool for you is, is, is right. I guess, guess the question. And if, uh, if you already have a dongle and, and you have absolutely, you know, zero problems and, and you're, you, the pace you're doing, the reliability, you're satisfactory with all of that. It's not like you're forced to upgrade your dongle yeah. and or dongles will continue to work. Yeah. I thought you were going to take that a different way as in, uh, if you're okay with connecting a lot of dongles and having less power and walking slowly on your service, then yeah, go ahead and stick with that. That's what I was trying to say. But I just tried to sugarcoat just say it. it just you know? say it. Yeah. Well, you know, let's, let's be fair. Those those adapters are breaking. You know, at least for us, the Proxima eighty four ninety four based adapters. Man, they, they you know we, we go through breakage. You know, of of let's call it you know ten percent a year. At some point, that's gonna those adapters are you just can't get them anymore. Um, so if you've got them and if you like them, be careful with them because they yep. are, they're Don't getting nick brittle. The nick. Yep. <laughs> That's yep. true. Actually, if you try to replace them, I've seen on eBay, some of them going for two, three, four hundred dollars Now, whether or not people are buying them for that price, <laughs> um, but it's rather interesting, uh, to Sam's point. It's, it, they're very hard to get. Yeah. They're like old cars or old wine. They just, you know, uh, get more and more expensive. <laughs> So you guys have been pretty successful with your deployments and all your all the people that that are under you guys pretty much prefer to use the sidekick. I mean, what else is there to talk about it? I mean, I'm waiting for mine, so I'm I think mine's coming next month 
And I'm actually delaying some surveys until I get it. <laughs> yeah. And we're, 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 you know, in the middle of our adoption. So, um, you know, probably your delays are largely in part, I guess, due to me. Sorry. Um, but <laughs> how, many did you order, how many did you order again, Sam? <laughs> Um, we ordered in excess of a hundred. Oh um, man, I just need so, to. So, <laughs> yeah. Hashtag uh, blame sorry. Sam. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, uh, you know, we, we, you know, we have, um, uh, you know, our adoption is, is taking off as fast as production can keep up. And, yeah. you know, we have, we absolutely have an internal waiting list of people who are like, when can I get mine? When can mm. I get mine? Um, you know, those that do, um, you know, they're, they're not helping my situation any. Yeah, I mean, who knew that the sidekick itself would actually take off quite as well as it did? I mean, I've I've been hearing a lot of good feedback from the people who have already received theirs, so it only makes me more anxious to to receive mine, and I'm looking forward to trying it out and testing it against you know the same tests that George did, only to to find that I'll probably say, yeah, George was right. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, yeah, we were quite honestly we were surprised by the demand uh, as well. So, so uh, we are trying to keep up with the supply, and we're we're improving things there there as well. But there is granted some lead time like right now. If you buy the unit today, it will not ship mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know that that's a positive problem. I, I know it hurts a lot of people, and I I feel sorry, and I do apologize for that. But that's a pro positive problem that will be overcome in a, in a fairly short time frame. Sure, and and it's our you know the number one priority for the company right now to resolve. Well, uh, for Sam and uh, George, what would be some of like one or two tips for people who are just getting theirs? Like, is there something that you've noticed that works well with using the uh, <laughs> using the sidekick? <laughs> I would say, uh, one, get comfortable with it before you go out on site, right? Uh, make sure you got it working. Make sure you, uh, you got your strap adjusted. Uh, cause this way, when you get on site, you're ready to roll. Um, <clears throat> we, ha we had the opportunity to play with it for about, uh, two weeks, uh, with the one sidekick that we had, did all our testing with it. We felt really, really confident with it. Um, and then when we started testing the other sidekicks to Sam's point, we found a lot of consistency with the readings that we were collecting. So, you know, it's like anything else. As you start to collect the RF data, you have to be confident with the devices that you're using. So I would just say play with it for uh, for a period of time to get that confidence level. Yeah, and I would say that, um, you know, one of the first things that we hear on a fairly regular basis is, uh, you know, the people who pick up a sidekick for the first time, they're like, oh my gosh, this thing is heavy. And and that's not a, it's, it's like, I, I guess it's sort of alarming to say that, uh, that the, you know the first thing you're going to feel the first thing you're going to think to myself is man this thing is this thing is weighty um but I, i'll be honest with you that all that weight just disappears when you put it on when you when you sling it over your shoulder um it's it, it, it's incredibly elegant and and i'll be honest it just sort of melts away um, mm -hmm. i was on a design last week and it, it's like i was i was walking around you know sweating um like crazy and you know one of the things i didn't worry about how it was the sidekick or, or, or how heavy it was and how it felt. It was just, uh, it was just like, I guess it was just like wearing a purse, I suppose. Um, <laughs> not that I do that regularly, but there you have it. Come on. It's, a, week, it's a weekend <laughs> thing for Sam. Uh, okay. Hey, 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 hey. No, it's the high heels, not the purse. So, so, um, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's, it's, um, so think of like, w sidekick weighs about one kilo. It's the less than a weight of your, you know, jacket. Or it's less than the weight of an empty messenger yeah. bag. So, so that's kind of the ballpark. It, it, indeed, cause it's such a small device, mm -hmm. it's heavy in your hand. Yeah. I mean, if you're not, if you're doing a survey and you're not wearing a bag and you just have the psychic, it's just like carrying your bag. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here's the, Oh. Interestingly enough, it, it it didn't feel heavy to me. You know, I'm wondering if Sam needs to work out a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That is absolutely true. No, no doubt about it. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, but you know, it, it, the other interesting thing that that we that we heard from a from a wearability perspective, I actually had a, a concern um, from somebody the other day who was like, "Well, I, I I can't I can't wear this thing because I don't I don't like feeling like I'm." 
constricted. Like they felt like, you know, the strap over their shoulder with the psychic in their back, they, they felt like it was personally constricting them. And the thing to note is that there is a, there's a quarter inch grommet on the back of that, that accepts a standard camera mount. You can screw a belt clip in onto it. You can screw any number of things to it, whether they be, um, you know, Molly straps or, or what there's a, there's a tremendous amount of flexibility. Don't feel like you have to strap the thing over your shoulder and then wear it on your back. You can wear it on your hip. You can attach it to the outside of a of a backpack if you're wearing that. And there, there's there's an infinite amount of flexibility about where and how you carry it. And I would say if if you don't like the way it is, make sure that you give it enough chance to 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 get into a position where you are comfortable with it. It's right. it's yeah. a different way of working. That's for sure. I certainly would add one other feature that uh, you may not know. In fact, uh, Jerry showed this when he came out on site with us. You can actually weave, if you will the USB cable through the strap. So you don't have the cable kind of loose or dangling. Oh, that's a good tip. You can actually weave it through the strap that, uh, um, that you're wearing. Well, there you go. That prevents, you know, that from snagging on something. You know, can I talk about that USB cable for a second? <laughs> go ahead. Let us know how you feel, Sam. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, you know, no, there, there's been there's been a lot of grief about that USB cable because you have to have a, a sort of a predefined length that, that comes with the unit, and uh, you know, as George I think was just alluding to, that that cable length may may sag, and some people may not necessarily be 100 percent satisfied with with that sagging, but it offers a tremendous amount of flexibility, and um, I for one am, am quite satisfied with the length of the cable being just a little bit longer than than what maybe is is normally usable. Mm -hmm. I found myself, you know, if I was surveying in a warehouse and I had to set my gear down and, and literally you have nothing to set your gear down on to other than the floor. And like, literally I have, I, there was plenty of times where I found myself setting my survey laptop, the sidekick, you know, all sorts of stuff, just literally on the floor of the warehouse. And when I went to go pick it up, I could pick up the sidekick and put it on my shoulder without worrying about pulling the USB cable out of the laptop that was still on the ground. Um, so there's, there's enough cable length that, that it's flexible enough that, that really, however you find yourself working throughout the day, whether it's setting your laptop on a desk or whether it's on the floor, or whether you got to set it on a cabinet or whatever, um, that, that it does allow the freedom to do really whatever it is you need to do without having to go into contortions to get this thing, to get this whole assembly sort of lifted up and on your body. Um, there's, there's plenty of flexibility. All right. I uh, kind of want to ask an, a different topic question because I don't think we we covered it. Do you guys use the Sidekick for just troubleshooting? Because the resolution is so good on this thing, much better than or uh, comparable to Clean Air. Do you find yourself just opening Echo and looking at the um, the frequency through the the Sidekick? I mean, I find myself doing that all the time, but I don't know if it's because I have to do troubleshooting or if it's because it's just a beautiful work of art. <laughs> I can comment on that. So so normally when we do our deployments, we'll have a dedicated survey device uh, or spectrum analyzer. And that's the comment where, you know, uh, it comes in with the additional NICs. When we're doing uh, – using our surfaces, we'll have just doing our Wi-Fi assessment. And then what we would typically do is place an access point dedicated just to spectrum analysis. Um, <clears throat> I'm hoping that, you know, again, future releases, perhaps we can get uh, more granularity into the signatures, which I understand is coming. But also perhaps uh, using it more for defining troubleshooting uh, from a spectrum analyzer where you can actually take this – and put it in an area and let it collect a lot of data. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we've have done that, it for have that one frequency component kind of pop out on its as its own application versus opening Echo completely. Yeah, and maybe like uh, you know collecting spectrum analyzer data independent of the map because now yeah. the only way to kind of store that data into a file is click on the map, and yeah. only then do we store that data. I guess okay, that's what gotcha. George is kind of after and like more flexible ways of rewinding uh to to the past uh of the spectrum data without having to use a map is that kind of what you're after george correct correct uh, using it more as a troubleshooter mm. hey um I know uh, Rowell is showing me uh, like three minutes, guys. Get 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 out of my <laughs> my hands my are Palo crossed. Alto. <laughs> my arms are crossed. <laughs> but, um, yeah, since um, just coming back to the audio spectrum analysis yeah. thing, and speaking of audio, there's um, there's music people at Echo, like music lovers, and for example, we have. 
technical systems engineers, technical sales engineers, product managers like Jerry Alla, and you, you guys know, all know Jerry very well, and, and mm-hmm. Joel, Joel Crane. And turns out, Ekaho is out of Finland, right, originally. Yeah. These guys are from the US, but they're still huge fans of Finnish rap. <laughs> so we actually hired one of the best, uh, well, most well-known rap bands in Finnish, Finland, to perform at our company party, oh, really? where Joel and wow. Jerry were, just because of, of those guys, you know, they... they just, they love Finnish rap. Yeah, much. they just lo- love it so much. So I would like to, like... Uh, you know, you know, maybe close this out by, uh, listening to Bluetooth, uh, from a spec, on a spectrum analyzer while I play Finnish rap on my mobile <laughs> phone. Uh, so, so what I'm saying is, uh, you won't hear, well, maybe we'll fade in the rap uh, as an after effect. So, so what, what I'll do is I'll, I have my AirPods on and I'll, I'll just play some, um, over Bluetooth, some Finnish rap just for Joel and Jerry, uh, cause it, cause uh, according to them, it is a thing. So let's listen what Bluetooth sounds like when you're listening to Finnish rap. This is standard Wi-Fi background noise, and then we'll fire up uh, the Bluetooth transmission here. I feel like R2-D2 screaming at me. He's just waving his hands in the air. I have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> well, he's waving his hands in the air because he just doesn't care. <laughs> <laughs> so, so to my experience, there's some relation. If you look at a spectrum analyzer and you have a Bluetooth enabled device, uh, like like a mobile phone, to my experience, the Bluetooth for some reason seems to be more active when you move the device around. So, I think there's some relation between accelerometer or motion detector, motion sensor in the phone, and the Bluetooth activity. I don't. I, it doesn't make any sense, but that's kind of... Uh, and so you're so trying, trying to... Out. You're, we're trying to listen to that difference there. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. With, with varying degrees of success, success. Usually, you know, no no success whatsoever. I don't I don't know if you heard the difference. This is kind of the, the Wi-Fi here at Hana House. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> so it's fairly active, but not active all the time. And um, let's, let's do one more... Uh, of those Bluetooth, see, okay. see if it makes. If so, we, can, we can certainly see the difference, but there it is. Yeah, yeah, that's Bluetooth. So what what UC is doing is playing the ambient Bluetooth, and he he this has Bluetooth Finnish rap. Yeah, so he now he's playing Bluetooth or he's playing Finnish rap on his phone, which is being sent via Bluetooth to his heads headphones. And that's what it sounds like. And when, and he waves his phone around so we can try to get the the difference in the in the sound there. And it's uh, kind of interesting. And then uh, and here's, the, got, here's again the video camera. He's uh, got a video camera. With let's, let's turn it on. Oh, there you go. So that's now video camera uh, centered around channel number five. We can change the channel. And this is non, non-Wi-Fi, right? This is an interfering yeah, video so camera. we're basically ruining the Wi-Fi for we're everyone We're basically here ruin, in killing, the, in killing the Wi-Fi yeah. uh, for <laughs> Hannah House. Uh, I, I do apologize. So this is uh, channel uh, centered around channel 11. Maybe one final thing. Uh, if we do an upload uh, test over Wi-Fi, can we do that? I, I think we can. Uh, where am I associated to? Uh, maybe five. Should be using uh, Hannah. Oh, you're trying to I, I am on Hannah House, I think. Uh, I just need to see where I'm. So, oh, I am there uh, on channel 149. So let me fire up speedtest.net. Here we go. On my laptop. We're going to hear what a speed test sounds like? Yes, <laughs> we are. Because this is uh, the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as it is now. It's in production use, so there's quite a bit of activity. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there's quite get... a bit of people here. Uh, it's a co-working space. Hear that? Uh, yeah. Let me turn it up. And I can see it that speed turning test red on there. 100 yeah. megs per second uh, on channel 149. And that's... That's the download test, and then uh, let's do upload after, I think. What does it look like on a FaceTime call? <laughs> <laughs> Is that you, so, Sam? <laughs> so that's, that's uh, Wi-Fi activity. Uh, Somebody was just calling EC right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I muted it, but it just came through. 
so you see what you're saying is uh, this will be a feature in Echo Half <laughs> that we'll be walking around with headphones now. <laughs> it's a it's a new accessibility. Can feature, we create an it's album? <laughs> we can create a create an album, right, of Wi-Fi for you can create an album for every survey you do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and speaking of music, like you you actually can make it sound like a music. If I have a, like an Hack RF Havoc oh, here, you've got for, all for, sorts for of example. tools with you. So, so, <laughs> so you can program it so that it starts sounding like music. We were making like the you know the mushroom collection sound from Super Mario Brothers mm, by, yeah, by just yeah. programming this and and stuff like that. So so anything you can do. And in terms of the feature, I think we'll you know, you know okay, keep it <laughs> keep it as a prototype for now. But if somebody and this is for the community, like if there is uh, some like. Uh, great idea on yeah. how to develop this further than certainly but speaking of the like you could hear wi-fi that's actually true i was walking around the trade show floor with this feature and i could hear as i went closer to aps further mm-hmm. from aps i could hear when i went closer to wireless microphones using you know zigbee or, or whatever mm. so it is kind of cool of course you need to know what kind of what yeah, you're looking what it, for yeah, what it but sounds what like you do uh, you but you could use like a directional antenna and i guess if you've got better ears than eyes he can figure out where exactly. that device is coming from exactly hmm. well this is new this is new to me and this is the world <laughs> premiere on rowell's clear to send podcast yeah, this is a uc's new wi-fi album coming out soon Yes, <laughs> it's, it's called uh, spectrum analysis featuring finnish rap <laughs> Well, that was a, I think, a great way to end the episode with a, a nice song of Wi-Fi converted over to audio. Is there anything else you guys want to chime in on on the uh, on the psychic? Is there anything this thing can't do? I mean, it can play music, so. <laughs> <laughs> No, well, I'd say it's it's becoming the de facto tool for us. So I, I don't know what how much more of an endorsement I can give it, other than you know <laughs> we, we bought a lot of them, so should you. Yeah, and and I'll add to that. You know, that's our standard today. So uh, no longer are we going to be fighting with nicks and cables and hubs and and the like. Uh, the sidekick is our standard now. Yeah, and you guys answered some of the questions I had, which was mainly regarding uh, positioning of the sidekick because I know we were very careful with where we put our USB NICs, you know, mm-hmm. and some of them I didn't want too close to each other or even the, the hub creating interference because it yep. was USB yep. three. We saw, we saw all of and that, so, so I think the biggest concerns were, okay, if I put it to my left, does that affect this, whatever it's gathering with, APs on my right side, that kind of thing. So, so we did uh, just like it was funny when George was explaining his uh, testing methodology, and and that's like that's exactly how we started as well. When we figured out dongles ain't gonna cut it, uh, we we were like, okay, but if if you wear it, we need to test it extensively. So so we had actually guys running around the office with twenty dongles in different parts of their body like like we wanted to, costume yeah we wanted to understand seriously uh like what is the real world impact and then you know our what is the rf chamber impact and and stuff like that and we came to the exact same conclusion as george that doesn't make such a big difference but what does make a difference is if you get it further out from the laptop the readings get improved so that that was improvement number one uh and you know it, it just seemed it yeah. seemed like the feasible way uh, to, to okay. take this forward. Yeah, because it, it brings me back to Cisco Live when Jerome Henry was doing a presentation on – on uh, he basically had his phone and he put it to his head. And if he turned his head, you know, his head in between the phone and the AP, you would actually see the signal drop. And he oh, was actually gathering that. Signal. Absolutely. So those were the things I was thinking of when it came to the sidekick. Or orientation has a huge impact to Wi-Fi because your body blocks like mm-hmm. 9, 9 dB. And to compensate that, just take more survey points. And, and if you survey fairly carefully and with sidekick, you can, you know, walk quickly. So, so, uh, but yes, it doesn't take away the fact that you need to survey carefully. Mm-hmm. Mind you, Sidekick is much more omnidirectional mm-hmm. by design and, and higher quality in terms of like getting the signals from all around and not just, you know, from a certain direction compared to an Wi-Fi adapter. And trust me, we've run a, a few tests yeah. on, on the USB dongles. So, so uh, we try to make Sidekick as omni as possible. But, but of course, there is no such thing as a ball-shaped uh, uh, antenna when it comes to the radiation pattern. Okay. But we had like... Uh, 
you know, the guys who have designed when Nokia still was making awesome hardware for their cell phones, we had the same guys design our antennas and stuff like that. Mm. They really knew what they were doing. Plus, Psychic is pretty big and the antennas are around the unit. So we have more real estate to improve the reception and make it more omni. Oh, that's good to know. Well, that's great. I mean, I can't wait to start using mine. And I think it was a, a great step for Ekahau to go this path because that only makes um, ESS better, right? Because your crutch would have been the USB dongles. Yeah, yeah. And it's not like they are getting any better. And, and, <laughs> and, and you, know, you know, the world just do you mean? doesn't need USB adapters. Yeah. The, the USB adapters are a thing of the past since Centrino. I can't <laughs> believe that we've had these dongles available for so long. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I want to thank you guys for joining me on the show. Thank you, Yusi, for f- just flying down here from Finland just for this podcast. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's what I do for friends, man. <laughs> I do appreciate the invite. Thank you so much, Roval. And, and I, I mean, Sam and George really are the stars of the show. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, full disclaimer, we do not pay Sam and George to be on this <laughs> podcast. Uh, so, so they are, they are here. <laughs> out of goodwill. I, I really appreciate that, guys. Yeah, thank thanks. you so yeah, much. Thank you guys for sharing your experience on uh, what testing you've done with the Psychic, how we use it, and the tips that you provided to us. I'm sure it's going to help me and a lot more other people when they get theirs. Why don't we end this by saying where people can find you guys? We can start with Sam. Uh, sure. You can find me on Twitter at uh, Samuel underscore Clements, or you can find my blog at uh, sc-wifi.com. Yep, and you can find me on Twitter at Wireless Guru. That's with three S's or myda 211com And you can find me if you Google Yussi. That's J U S S I Wi Fi. So Yussi Wi Fi. LinkedIn, Twitter, uh, all that stuff that you know Sam and S- Sam and George do much better. Uh, I do a bit less, but I'm still there. <laughs> Awesome. And if you guys have any questions about the sidekick or about this episode, you can head over to the website, cleartosend.net. And you can hit us up on Twitter too if you have any, if you want to extend this conversation further. I'm sure people have questions. But other than that, I want to thank everybody for joining, getting together here for this episode. It was very inform- informational. And we will see everyone on the next episode. Thank you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.